In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Philip was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Philip and to all your servants who having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own Son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation 
or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To the glory and power forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Let us remember with thanksgiving what God has done through his servant, Phil. Philip Raymond Powell, son of Paul T. and Lucille H. Powell, was born in Ponca City on June 24, 1948. He was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit on April 10, 1960. Phil was joined together in holy matrimony to Carol on March 19, 1988. On November 19, 2020, Phil, at the age of 72 years, fell asleep in Jesus. He is survived by his wife, Carol, sons Dylan and Jefferson, sister Patricia, and numerous brothers and sisters-in-law, nieces and nephews. He is predeceased by his parents and his brother Paul. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give thanks to God our Father through Jesus Christ for our brother Phil. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Though today is a day of grief, it is also a day to remember the steadfast love of the Lord. We have a faithful God, a God who loves us and provides for us. Even when the world is cast into darkness and death through the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden, God points ahead to the salvation that he would provide. The serpent's head would be crushed. Man would be reconciled to God. Jesus, of course, is that offspring of Eve who would crush the serpent's head. When Jeremiah the prophet looks around and witnesses the devastation that falls upon Jerusalem because the people were unfaithful to God, he takes up his pen and he writes the book of Lamentations, a book whose contents sound exactly like what the title would prepare you for. How has it come to this God? Why is there such devastation? And yet right in the middle of that book of lament comes our first reading today. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Dylan, you told me that your father prayed all the time, but he always prayed prayers of thanksgiving. He could always see enough of God's blessings and promises in his life that he never felt the need to ask for more or to complain or do anything else but give thanks. What a blessing it is to look around us and see God's gifts poured out upon us. And yet it is not wrong for a believer to lament like Jeremiah. But still, even in our grief, even in our lamentation, we do so relying on God's goodness and mercy. We do so with thanksgiving in our hearts. Jeremiah lived still centuries before Jesus would come to fulfill the promise that mankind would be set free from Satan's bondage. Jeremiah looks around him and sees destruction caused by people's sin, yet he confesses the steadfast love of the Lord, love that never ceases. He recognizes that the Lord is one in whom he can hope even when things don't look very hopeful. We share this hope today. In fact, this hope is even more certain, more full for us, 
because we get to look back on the work that Christ has done for, uh, for us. We see the Son of God given in love for the life of the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We have more than the promise of a Savior. We have the history of a Savior. We are well familiar with the angels who announced his birth to shepherds, with the children who sing Hosanna as he enters Jerusalem. We remember his agony in the garden, the horror of his death, and yet also we know that everything he suffers is for our good. He was forsaken by God so that we would be reconciled to God. In him our sin is atoned for, and by his wounds we are healed. And yes, we know the story of that Easter morning, the joy of the angel's message. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified one. He is not here, he is risen. And we join with the saints of all ages and echo that wonderful greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yes, the faithfulness of God made known to Jeremiah of old is even more clearly seen on this side of Jesus' death and resurrection. Yet the vision still grows more clear from here. The hope that we share with Jeremiah is even more clearly in focus for Phil, because Phil now rests from his labors. By faith, he always recognized the providence of God in his life. But now he knows it more fully firsthand. Now Phil knows not only that Jesus has won salvation for him, but Phil knows what it means to look on the face of his Savior and to know the manifest goodness of God, not as he sustains us through trials in this life, but as he radiates life onto and into everyone and everything in his presence. And yet even for Phil, the fullness of the hope that we have in Christ is not yet fully known. The hope that we share with Jeremiah and Phil, though from different perspectives, will be even more full, more clear than what Phil now knows it when Jesus comes again. Though Phil already knows what it means to leave the suffering of this fallen world behind, he is still waiting. He is waiting for the fullness of Jesus' salvation. Because Jesus did not just promise that Phil would put off cancer and that Phil would put off suffering in this life, but Jesus promises to rid cancer from Phil's body. Not only cancer, but every ailment. The fullness then of our joy in Christ will not be known until Christ comes again when our bodies are raised to be like his glorious body. And then we will stand with Phil and Jeremiah and Adam and Eve and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Job and Moses, with Peter, James and John and all the apostles, with the women who went to that empty tomb and all the faithful. And our voices will be left, lifted up in praise that never ends. We will sing not as those who recognize the faithfulness of God in the midst of adversity, but as those who recognize that by the mercy and faithfulness of God, all adversity has been done away with. And so for now, we wait. We know that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have confidence as we wait. We know that things are not yet perfect. 
we will miss Phil and so many others. It's okay to cry. It's good to yearn for things to get better, for Jesus to come again. But as we do so, we have the luxury of patience because we know the victory has already been won. So we will cry, yet we rejoice. We will weep, yet we will shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the prayers of the church. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give to the family of Phil and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope 
and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Phil and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen.